Let the region E be bounded by the cone z equals two times the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared and the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 7.25z. Determine the volume of E. So to begin, we're looking for the volume of the solid E, which is this solid here, in the cone capped off by the sphere. To find the volume, we'll use a triple integral, where the volume is equal to the triple integral over the solid region E of one dV, but we'll be using spherical coordinates, and remember when using spherical coordinates, dV equals rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. It'll also be helpful to determine the xz trace, which I've already done here on the right. Recall to determine the xz trace, we set y equal to zero in both equations. If we set y equal to zero in the first equation, we have z equals two times the square root of x squared, which simplifies to plus or minus two x, which gives us this v shape. Notice on the right, the slope of the line is two or two over one. On the left, the slope is negative two or negative two over one. And then for the second equation, if we set y equal to zero, we have x squared plus z squared equals 7.25z, which gives us the circle. And now let's begin to set up the triple integral in spherical coordinates that will give us the volume. Again, because we're using spherical coordinates, we have rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Before we determine the limits integration for rho, phi, and theta, for a quick review using spherical coordinates, Rho is the distance between the point and the origin. Theta is the angle counterclockwise from the pole or positive x-axis in the xy plane. And phi is the angle between the positive z-axis and the point, all of which are illustrated here on the right. We first determine the limits of integration for rho. Looking at the xz trace, notice rho starts at zero and then goes out to a point on the circle given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 7.25z. This indicates zero is the lower limit of integration for rho. To determine the upper limit, let's focus on the equation of the sphere. But remember in spherical coordinates, rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and z is equal to rho cosine phi. Performing the substitutions, we have rho squared is equal to 7.25 rho cosine phi. To solve for rho, we'll set the right side equal to zero. Factor the left. Set the factors on the left equal to zero, which gives us rho equals zero, or rho minus 7.25 cosine phi equals zero. Solving for rho, we have rho equals 7.25 cosine phi. Notice both solutions give us the limits of integration for rho. The limits of integration for rho are from zero to 7.25 cosine phi. And now we determine the limits of integration for phi, which is the angle from the positive z-axis, this angle here. The lower limit of phi is zero. To determine the upper limit of integration for phi, we'll form a right triangle by sketching a horizontal segment from the z-axis to the line given by z equals two x. Let's show this on a different slide. If we sketch the red segment here, notice it forms a right triangle, where the angle phi is this angle here in the right triangle. So if we enlarge a representative rectangle, because the slope of this line is two or two over one, we can label the vertical leg two, the horizontal leg one. Notice in relation to phi, we have the length of the opposite side and the adjacent side, which means tangent phi is equal to one half, and therefore phi is equal to arctangent one half. This is the upper limit of integration for phi. Going back to the right triangle, we can also determine the length of the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse has a length of square root five. So going back to our work, we now know the upper limit for phi is arctangent one half. And now we determine the limits of integration for theta which is the angle from the positive x-axis in the xy plane. I didn't show the xy trace, but if we take a look at the three-dimensional graph, to get the volume, we have to go all the way around the xy plane. The limits integration for theta are from zero to two pi. And now we begin to evaluate the triple integral by integrating with respect to rho. The integral of rho squared sine phi with respect to rho is rho cubed divided by three times sine phi, or one-third 
row cubed sine phi. Now we determine big F of 7.25 cosine phi minus big F of zero by performing substitution for rho. When rho is equal to 7.25 cosine phi, we have one third times the cube of 7.25 cosine phi times sine phi. And then when rho is zero, we just have zero. So the new integrand function is one third times the cube of 7.25 times the cube of cosine phi times sine phi. Let's factor out the constant of one third times a cube of 7.25. And now we integrate with respect to phi, which is going to require u substitution. We will let u equal cosine phi, and therefore du is equal to negative sine phi d phi which indicates negative du is equal to sine phi d phi. This is d phi here. Let's go ahead and write this without the limits of integration with respect to u. We have the integral of u cubed for cosine cubed phi, and then sine phi d phi is equal to negative du. Integrating with respect to u, we have negative u to the fourth divided by four, or negative one-fourth u to the fourth plus c. Which means the antiderivative with respect to phi, which means the antiderivative with respect to phi is going to be negative one-fourth times the fourth power of cosine phi. Let's continue on the next slide. We now determine big F of arctangent of, we now, we now determine big F of arc tan of one half minus big F of zero by performing substitution for phi. When phi is equal to arc tangent one half, we have negative one fourth times the fourth power of cosine of arc tangent one half. I'm gonna go ahead and write that as cosine of arc tan of one half to the fourth and then minus when phi is equal to zero, we have negative one-fourth times the fourth power of cosine zero. And now we need to simplify. Let's focus on the cosine of arctangent of one-half. Remember, arctangent of one-half was the angle of phi in a right triangle. If we go back to that right triangle, again, this angle phi is the angle that has a tangent function value of one-half. We're looking for the cosine of this angle, which is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is two divided by square root five, which gives us negative one fourth times the fourth power of two divided by square root five. And then we have minus cosine zero is one, one of the fourth is one. We have minus negative one fourth or plus one fourth. Let's go ahead and factor out the one fourth and also change the order of this sum. So we factor out one-fourth, we already have a one-third there, so we'd have one-twelfth times the cube of 7.25 times the integral from zero to two pi of, again, we factored out the one-fourth, so we have one minus the fourth power of two divided by square root five. And actually, this is a constant too. Let's go ahead and factor this out as well. So we have one-twelfth times the third power of 7.25 times the difference of one and the fourth power of two divided by square root five, all times the integral from zero to two pi of just one d theta. Integrating one with respect to theta, we simply get theta as the antiderivative. And big F of two pi minus big F of zero simplifies to just two pi. So the final value is one twelfth times 7.25 to the third, times the quantity one minus the fourth power of two divided by square root five, all times two pi. Let's write this one more time. Notice two pi times one twelfth is equal to two pi divided by 12, or pi divided by six, giving us pi divided by six times the cube of 7.25,
times the difference of one and the fourth power of two divided by square root five. And remember this is volume, so this would be cubic units. And if you're curious, the decimal approximation for this is approximately 71.8315, again, cubic units. I hope you found this helpful.